Well good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. On today's video we're going to be talking about Honda CBX 550F2, why it didn't sell very well and why it's one of my favourite bikes. They were only produced from uh, 1982 to 1986 and in the UK they were only available for two years. Uh, this example is a 19 from 1982, the first year of production. Um, the only difference between the F and the F2 is the F2 um, has this fairing. It's a pretty basic fairing to be honest. There are no internal panels or anything like that. It's just literally the bare fairing and then you can see right down to the subframe inside. They're available in two colours in the UK. Uh, this one which I've got which is the blue, red and white and then there was also a red, white and black. Uh, the original one I had back in the 80s was that colour. Um, that's what I was looking for but this one came up and to be honest uh, it was a bike I couldn't really turn down bearing in mind the condition that it was in when I found it. Um, the paint is original, uh, most of this bike is original. Um, the only thing I've replaced is the rear shock. Um, which you can see if you look through there just about um, basically the shock absorber had gone completely it had completely seized up wasn't worth rebuilding um, this particular bike came with a motad four into one exhaust um, which I was never happy with uh, it gave it a horrendous flat spot at about two and a half three thousand revs so I went out to source um, an original exhaust, which I eventually found um, needed re-chroming, but I do think these exhausts set these bikes off because it's got the swooping um, three pipes coming down and then the one pipe running down the back of it, sort of reminiscent of a 404, although well, all four pipes and that went the same way. Um, to my mind, this is the natural successor to the 404. It's a relatively lightweight, uh, low centre of gravity bike and um, it handles extremely well uh, for the age that it is. Uh, the exhausts were re-chromed re -re by s and uh, plating down in Bristol. They made a fantastic job of it and I would highly recommend them. Inline 572cc engine, uh, slightly unusual design to compete in the middleweight sector, twin overhead camshaft, um, screw adjusters for the clearances and actuating 16 valves, so four valves per cylinder. Although badges are 550, it's actually 572 um, cc and weighs in at 190 kilograms for the F2 model with the fairing. So power to weight ratio is pretty good um, and they are um, quite fast for a bike of their age. These were really a stopgap for Honda um, before the V4s came out, uh, which replaced them. Um, they only sold for two years in the UK uh, before they were withdrawn um, so there's not a not many of them left certainly not in this sort of condition um, I had one when I was I don't know early 20s and I used to love riding this and used to go on holidays in it Devon and Cornwall um, put some throwover panniers over the back and then with the ex-girlfriend we'd uh, head off down to Devon and Cornwall from the Midlands and spend a couple of weeks down there. Never let me down. Um, they did suffer with cam chain tensioner issues. Um, I didn't see that on mine. Um, I don't see any issues with this one either from what I can tell. So um, this one seems like a reasonably reliable model. Um, the, this one's done about 28,000 miles which I'm pretty sure is genuine. Um, the fuel gauge is typical of all bikes of this age. Basically it says it's full or it's empty and nothing in between. So I've done 136 miles since I filled it up. I'm not in reserve yet and the fuel gauge is telling me it's empty. But I know that's not the case. Um, at the time Honda pretty much threw everything, everything they could at this bike um, from a tech point of view. So you had um, air link suspension at the front you had um, anti-dive on the uh, front forks you had pro link rear suspension uh, on the rear 
um, inboard ventilated disc, which we'll talk more about uh, in a minute. It really did pretty much have everything. Um, the CV uh, carburetors were of a um, relatively new, de new design. They had um, internal fuel passages for cold starting and they, um, they engineered the uh, inlet tracks to achieve a smooth gas flow, uh, which does help with uh, the bike warming up. One of the reasons these didn't sell very well was because of um, these inboard ventilated discs, as they're known, which on first inspection look a little bit like old style drum brakes. Um, and although this bike won bike of the year back in the day, um, people were somewhat suspicious of these inboard ventilated discs. Now, personally, I don't have any issues with them. I think they work perfectly well. The idea was that um, they were using cast iron uh, brake discs, which go rusty, and you don't want to see that. So they were put inboard to hide that away, but it provides extremely good braking um, in the wet because back in the 80s, uh, brake pad technology and brake disc technology was nowhere near as it was as good as it is today. And once the brakes got disc brakes got wet, they didn't function very well for the first second or so while you applied them. So by hiding the disc away, um, basically you could um, keep the disc dry, and that meant that the brakes were extremely effective in the wet. In fact, they sold this bike on the fact that um, it would stop much more quickly than any other bike in its class in the wet. Uh, twin pot calipers, um, twin discs on the front, single disc on the rear, again with a twin pot uh, caliper on the rear. It does make um, changing brake pads um, <laughs> interesting, shall we say. There are basically three screws, one here, one here, and one around the other side and you take those off and then this shroud here comes away and the pads are mounted not on the um, on the top uh, the calipers if you like are not mounted or the pads I should say are not mounted um, from this side they're mounted from the inside of the disc but once you've got this the shroud itself off um, you only need to undo one bolt and the pads just drop out so they're quite easy to change there's no more maintenance required on this than any other brake um, they do have brake pad wear indicators built into them so you can see it without disturbing any of this um, you know it, it they they became known as um, uh, a problem brake but to be honest with you a lot of that's hearsay um, and old wives tales and I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I think they work perfectly well. Um, they're not unique to this bike. Honda did trial them on a couple of other um, bikes around the same time as well, but they did soon disappear. When I first got this bike, it needed light recommissioning. Um, the fork seals had um, perished, so um, I had to strip the front end, uh, redo the fork seals. Same with the uh, steering head bearings. I replaced the um, roller bearings with taper needle bearings. The um, rear shock, I said it seized up completely. I had to change that. Um, the calipers, the pistons had all seized. I had to remove all of those, free all of those off and replace the um, pistons in those. Um, tires and everything were absolutely fine. Uh, paintwork, as I said, is original. Honda paintwork. Honda paintwork at the time was phenomenal. It really was very, very, very impressive. Um, the tank is completely clean inside. It's like a brand new tank. I did have the carburetors off, um, strip them, clean them, uh, put them back on, rebalance them. Took the uh, uh, rocker cover off and reset all the clearances. Um, uh, the bike is MOT'd, it's on the road, and in fact I'm going to a bike meet on it uh, later on this morning. So as far as I'm concerned, this bike's a keeper. Um, that's because so I had one back in the day. I had lots of fun on this bike. It's a great little bike to ride. As um, long as you keep it uh, riven away, it'll quite happily sit at motorway speeds, no problem, but it's also um, eminently flickable through the twisties. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up down below, subscribe, 
and I'll see you in the next one.